Hey everyone, I'm Ben Holmes, and thank you for tuning in to the Jamstack Station. Now, huh, Ben Clark, I'm busy right now, but can you go down in the comment section and answer people's questions for like 10 minutes? Awesome, thanks. So, I don't know about you, but I like the Jamstack however it's served. Whether it's a React ravioli with some reducer fat beef, maybe a pineapple upside marked down cake, or a beautifully pre-rendered patty, some svelted cheese, and a toast notified bun. Whew. There's a lot of ways to enjoy the jam stack, but the way I see it, there's two ways that you can prepare a jam stack dish. The first is to keep things light. Just have a nice 11D or Jekyll summer salad. This has all the main food groups represented. We have our HTML as the base, some Markdown Romaine maybe, or some liquid and nunchucks. And then sprinkling on that CSS with our avocado positioned relative to our tomatoes and onions here. So all the main pieces represented there, and it wouldn't be jam sack without some CMS seasoning. So I like to bring in a little Prismic pecans, maybe some Contimeful. And just like that, it's built and it's ready to serve. So there's a lot to enjoy about this approach. First off, sticking with those leafy template language greens keeps our SEO nice and strong. And if you're a vegan trying to avoid that beefy bundle, it's certainly nice to get that time to interactive close to zero. Now, some people might enjoy a salad every day, but others might say, you know what? I could really go for a burger right now. Bring in that React, Vue, or Svelte to give me that state management umami flavor. If I need, say, a global context to store the cart on my e-commerce experience. It also helps me out with some spicy animations to spark joy for users. Like if I want to bring in Framer Jalapeno Ocean in order to have wipes and fades to almost bring in app-like experience to my website. So there's a lot to love about both of these approaches, but if it were me, I wouldn't want to have one or the other for every meal or every route on my site. Like I could stick with a salad for everything, but then I might realize I really need a multi-step checkout form that React could help me with, but tools like Eleventy and Jekyll aren't going to help me get there. Or I might stick with the burger for everything and my arteries start feeling those kilobytes and I'd like to reach for just some static markdown in CSS for my blog or my about page. So let's talk about a recipe that can sort of bring both of these worlds together. Let us start with those template leafy greens and then introduce that patty only for the routes or the islands within a route that could actually benefit from it. So let's talk the perfect recipe for any Jamstack occasion. Ben will be preparing his favorite 11 Vita and jam sandwich. Served on whole wheat bread with aged 11 brie and JS extra mayo, it makes for the perfect mid-afternoon jam snack. Whoa, ready, set, make, right? Let's talk about hydration for a minute. If you haven't heard about it, it's a way to render your JavaScript components into plain HTML and CSS, either at build time or on server request. And then on the client, we're going to import the JavaScript for that markup. We're going to find that beautifully rendered HTML and we're going to hydrate it with interactivity. This is the way we make your button clicks actually do something if you're using a component SSG like Next.js, Gatsby, or SvelteKit. But if you're using the common approach with these, it has a pitfall. Where if we have a simple experience like this Jamstack Conf homepage, you might use components to build the whole experience. And JavaScript is really useful for something interactive like an image carousel. But for the static SVG in our logo, or for the bulleted list in our heading, we don't really need JavaScript for these pieces. So we want to find a way to partially hydrate this page and only ship JavaScript for the pieces that actually need it. So I have a code demo for this. So here we have those sets of components we were just looking at on that whiteboard. We have our components imported one after the other inside of a home.jsx file. And then in this index.html, I'm going to load up that home.jsx and insert it onto the page create React app style into a main with an ID of root. And you'll notice I'm using a JSX import directly here, which browsers don't really understand. So I'm going to use a fancy bundler called Vite that's able to pick up on these JSX imports and turn them into something the client can understand. So if I run Vite over this HTML file, it'll bundle it up, give me a nice server to look at that output. 
and we can see our beautiful Jamstack Conf page, including this interactive image carousel. I'm using Reach UI for this, by the way, to give it some keyboard accessibility. So that's nice, but of course we need JavaScript to see this whole experience. I wanna partially hydrate my page. So in my ideal world, I would be able to just take this JSX output and put it straight into my HTML file. And every time my compiler sees the word logo, it'll say, oh, that's a JSX component. I'm gonna go import that for you and put it onto the page. Of course, right now, Vita has no idea what to do with this, so the page is blank. We need a nice syntax that lets us import components where we need them. And for that, I'm gonna use something called a shortcode. This is literally just a function that takes in some arguments and spits out some HTML for our document. And the only argument I'm gonna pass is the path to my component. It's in my components folder, logo.jsx. And then I'm going to use a tool called Elevendy to interpret these shortcodes. If you haven't heard of Elevendy, it's a very capable static site generator. But for our purposes, we're just going to say, hey, Elevendy, every time you see the word React, I want you to return a P tag saying it worked. So it's literally a find and replace. And in order to run Elevendy, we're going to need to grab the Elevendy command. And it's going to build that HTML file into a build folder. And it's going to replace our shortcode with that P tag we asked for. And if we want to point V at this output to actually view it on a dev server and bundle some components in a minute, I'll point it at the 11D output and we can see in our server that it worked. Very nice. So of course we haven't done anything yet. Our shortcode's kind of falling short of our expectations. So we're going to teach our shortcode to actually bundle components. So I have a ready-made example here where we're going to take in the component path that we specified right here, component slash logo. And then we're going to import that component the same way we did create React app style. And then we're going to render it into a unique component root on the page. So if I save this guy, we should see Vite discovers we need React and React DOM. And then looking at our output, our logo magically appears, which is awesome. So we can expand this for the rest of our components. I'm going to put our heading into its own short code, image carousel, and learn more. I can remove these guys. And now we see that Vite discovers Reach UI for our image carousel. And over here, we see the same interactive page that we had before. So this is great, but we're still shipping JavaScript for all of our components. We need that hydration. And for that, we need to modify our script a little bit to say, first off, I want to opt in to shipping JavaScript wherever I actually need it. And then we also want to render our components at build time using pre-rendering. So I've introduced a second argument to our shortcode, ship JavaScript, yes or no. By default, we won't ship any. But if you opt into it, we're going to add in that script tag in order to hydrate your component using React Hydrate. The second thing we're doing is using Vite's SSR mode to pre-render our components to some HTML. So this is going to import this component into Node and use React's famous render to string in order to turn it into some HTML. And because Eleven is great at find and replace, we can just put that HTML straight in our shortcode output. So if I save this guy, we see a lot of components getting rendered at build time. And in our output, we can see our beautiful HTML. And sure enough, in our browser, we see the same page. But if I go to my network activity, we see that no JavaScript for our components is actually getting shipped, which is really awesome. But of course, our carousel isn't interactive anymore because now there's no JavaScript. So we want to opt in to using JavaScript just for this experience. So we're going to call on that ship JavaScript flag that I introduced before. And now we can see that it's importing reach and it's importing React in order to hydrate this component. So this is Island's architecture in its purest form, where we have these little islands of interaction where we can opt in to using JavaScript for the experiences that really need it. And if you're interested in learning more about this sort of project, I'm expanding this into a little uh, plugin for Eleventy called Slinkity. And this brings all the short codes that I just showed you, as well as a way to use React as a templating language. So if you want to build all of your pages with JSX, sort of Next.js style, this is the tool to do it. So I hope you enjoyed this at-home recipe. And if you want the takeout menu, I definitely recommend checking out the Slinkity project. We have a community going on the 11D Discord, and we're super open to feedback as we build this thing out. 
And I also want to call out Astro, which has been a huge inspiration for this project because we're essentially turning any 11e template into a .astro file using shortcodes. And I want to call out their partial hydration modes as well that we're inspired by, letting you only load resources when a component scrolls into view or when the browser is idle. All of these hooks in order to get the most out of Island's architecture. So thank you for your time, and I hope you enjoy your 11 d Vite, and Jam sandwich. Sit, Jamstack, sit. Woof, woof. Good boy.